Learning your trick identities are crucial if you want to get good at math. Let me tell you, it's actually kind of like learning how to drive. To a very expert driver, the basic actions of checking the mirror or pedaling or even parking are just automatic to them. If you want to get good, the basic things have to be second nature. A very common category of trig identities are the odd and even ones. Sine is an odd function, which means if you have a minus sign in the input, you can just take it outside. Cos is an even function, which means if you have a minus sign in the input, you just ignore it. Tan is an odd function, so it behaves like sine in the same way. Okay, next we have the Pythagorean identities, which come from a right angle triangle in the unit circle. So sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Divide both sides by cos squared to give you the next identity. And then you can divide the first identity by sine squared to give you 1 plus cot squared is cosec squared. Okay, some other ones to know are here. I won't bother going through them because they're pretty popular. You can search them up. Okay, now let's go through the top 5 most underrated trig identities. At number 5, we have double angle. Everyone knows sine 2x and cos 2x, but you really should memorize all three forms of the cos 2x one. The second and third forms follow from the first one, just by the Pythagorean identity, but I wouldn't bother proving them each time, because that way you can get fast at solving more hard problems. Also, there's a tan 2x double angle, which is not as common. I think you should still know it, but it's not that big of a deal. You can just prove it using sine 2x on cos 2x, and using double angle on those two. Okay, the next one a lot of people don't know. Cot x is actually defined as cos x on sin x, not as 1 on tan x, even though both are equivalent. Yet there is a bit of a weird thing happening at cot pi on 2. If you use the 1 on tan x definition, you get 1 on tan pi on 2. But is that undefined? Because tan pi on 2 is undefined. Well, if you look carefully at the graph of tan x, tan pi on 2 is kind of like plus minus infinity. So 1 on that is 0. Cot pi on 2 is 0, it's not undefined. But if you use the first definition I just gave you, cos x on sin x, it's way easier to see that this is zero. Just keep in mind that both definitions are useful in different circumstances. At number three, we have periodicity. If a function is periodic, then it means you can add any multiple of the period to the input and not have the output change. It also means that as you go along p units on the x-axis any number of times, then the function is going to repeat itself. Some examples of how this is useful is when you have f of x plus p, or f of x minus p, or anything like that. You can just ignore the multiple of p. This is useful because the trig functions are periodic. Sin x has a period of 2 pi, so does cos x, but tan x has a period of pi. So this is true for any integer k. You can see how this applies if you graph the functions on Desmos. At number 2, we have the complementary and supplementary identities. These are overpowered. They come up way too much, so it's really important that you know them. First of all, we have complementary. Sine pi on 2 minus x is cos x and cos pi on 2 minus x is sin x. How do you remember this? Well, cosine just stands for complementary sine, and complementary angles differ by pi on 2, or 90 degrees, and that's why these identities hold. In fact, it even works for cot and tan because cot is just cotan, or complementary tan. And then, of course, it has to work for cosec and sec, since cosec is just complementary sec. By the way, we usually use csc for cosec, probably to keep it at three letters like every other trick function. Okay, now for supplementary. These are really important as well. Sine pi minus x is just sine x. Cos pi minus x is minus cos x. And what is tan pi minus x? Well, remember the period of tan was pi. So you can actually just ignore the pi, giving us tan minus x, which is minus tan x because it's an odd function. You can prove all of these by using the angle sum identities, which I didn't go through in this video, but it's probably online, like everywhere. And at the number one spot, we have general solutions. Yes, I'm not kidding. These are way too underrated. Suppose you had a trig function of x is equal to a. How would you solve for x? Well, you could just take the inverse, right? Wrong. This is only one of the solutions, but sometimes you want a general solution, and these are the general solution formulas. But I'm not going to get into it now, that is for the next video, in which I'll explain clearly why these formulas are true and how you can actually derive them. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something new or enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, it would be great if we could get to 200.